So all right, let's get started with the demos. So we have a coding demo. We do. So there's only one way to start a coding demo. And that is hello world. All right, of course. So what you see here is that Greg is typing say hello world into the text box. Now he'll press the green play button. The model will produce the code and then we'll see its output below. And so exactly right. So what you're seeing here is a sim simple interface we built on top of the Codex API. So everything you're going to see today is just using the same API everyone's going to get access to. Um, so you could build the exact same thing. So as a user of this kind of system, you just kind of ask the computer to do something, and it actually does it. Well, it looks like it did a good job with Hello World. But let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say Hello World with empathy. I don't know what the model will <laughs> All say. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> I think that's actually a very reasonable choice. Um, so the kind of thing that you can do is you can also ask it for information that is kind of stored in a session. So now I'm going to say instead of saying hello world with empathy, I'm going to say it with empathy. And again, the model is kind of free to make a choice of what it wants to do with that. Um, in this case, you know, it decided to do the same thing, uh, which I think is, is a reasonable choice. It formatted the code a little bit differently. Um, but fundamentally, if you notice, it now has to kind of back reference uh, to, to the previous part of the conversation. So it looks like the model did a satisfactory job with saying hello world with empathy, but could it say it five times? Okay. Now that's an awful lot of empathy. I think it did not a bad job, but it's not quite exactly what I wanted. I didn't. I wanted to be hello world with empathy, with a each line, with each one of those things appearing on the new on the new line. Look now, and see. Hey, this just did print where it multiplied by five. So you couldn't say and still instead say now instead do it with a for loop, which again starts to be a lot of back referencing. But there we go. Is it, that what you wanted? Yes. It but I think we can go further. All right. We should say exponentially more hello worlds How by making it. We should make a web page. We've got to make a web page. If we relay our message and save it to a file. Ooh. Well, yeah, I'm curious what it will do. Tricky, taking a little bit of a risk here. It um, worked. There we go. So uh, if you notice, if you can see the code, uh, it's actually writing Python that then emits some HTML. And that's, again, one of the, the powers of this model, is it's a single model that's proficient in over a dozen programming languages. So is, is, is that all we need for a web page? Well, we should probably let people see the web page. Web server to serve that page. Let's give that a try. It looks like pretty complicated specialized code. Yes. Um, so let's actually take a look. So we have a web server running on port 8000. And there we go. Hello world with empathy. Oh, I would, I would say it's a success. Well, it's a success. Wouldn't it be nice if you could send lots of emails with hello world to everyone who is listening to us on the, on the live stream? <laughs> yes. So here's, here's a moment for, for everyone to participate. Um, so if you would like to receive an email as part of this demo from Codex, I, I think that we should be posting a, a link to sign up in to the chat now. Uh, it should also be displayed on the screen. So please go ahead and sign up, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a moment to do that. And while have... It is fundamentally impossible to build such a system, except by training a large neural network to do really good code autocomplete. That's all we did. So now it... let's show you how to hook Codex up to sending email. So we're going to be using the MailChimp API in order to do this. So it's very easy to give Codex new capabilities almost the same way that you explain to a programmer how to use a new method. You can do the same thing for Codex. And so I want to show you the only magic that's going on here is that we have uh, this plugin where on the left is instructions for humans, uh, for humans and uh, we can take a look at the actual code that is supposed to be installed on our system. It's just a very simple wrapper around the MailChimp API where I plugged in the API key already. And now we can simply take this documentation written you know, in very readable form and paste it to the model. So literally just those three lines of text is enough for the model to understand how to use the API. Exactly. There should obviously be a hello world as well as something truly useful like the price of Bitcoin. That sounds extremely useful. So we'll ask the model to look up the current Bitcoin price. Let's see if it works. All right, so it seems to have done something. And now way, let's actually send the email blast. Now send everyone in email telling them A, hello world, and B, the current Bitcoin price. So we'll leave it a little bit up to the model to decide exactly how it wants to format that email. Yeah, I'm curious what messages we'll choose. Let's see what happens. All right. Oh, looks like a very sensible message. Indeed. So now it's calling the, the MailChimp API. So let's give it a moment. 
Spinner is still spinning. Yeah. So it will probably, oh. There we go. That's a lot of emails. Yeah, so we're sending <laughs> 1,472 emails. Uh, uh, again, at this point, Codex has done its job. I feel like it was uh, a pretty satisfactory Hello World demo. I think this is the world's most advanced <laughs> Hello World demo. And while 1,472 lucky recipients are waiting for the email, it's time for us to move to our next stage. I think so. Let us build a game. That's right. right. And the game I have in mind is one where a person will be trying to dodge a boulder. All right, well, let's give that a try. Uh, a silhouette of a person, person for this, because they're going to get squashed by a boulder. That is a very wise choice. And, and what you see here is something very similar to the previous demo, where Greg is typing the instruction to the text box, then he presses play. The model does its neural magic and produces code, and now we get this oversized person on the page. Yep. It's actually the same model under the hood. So the only piece of magic we're not showing you right now is that we provide a little bit of context to the model. In the case of Python, we have just one example of following an instruction in Python. In the case of JavaScript, we have like two examples of, of doing it. Yeah, so I feel like it was a good first step. But what I would really like is for the person to be a lot smaller and for it to be controllable with the left and right arrow keys. Great. And we also just got a report that the emails have started rolling in. So I think that's a success for, for MailChimp and for, uh, for Codex. So I think that's great. Um, so let's see how big we want to make the person. Maybe 100 pixels. Does that seem about right? Let's find out. All right. Let's give that let's a try back to, to building. So we've got the person's 100 pixels. Look pretty good? I think so. All right. Now. And so we simply provide it with this context of, oh, you're supposed to follow some instructions. And then the model realizes my job is to latch onto instructions. OK, next. So let's get. So I want it to be at a reasonable position at the bottom of the space of okay. the screen and to be controllable with arrows. All right. Well, let's do that. So first, let's set its position to, uh, let's say, you know, 500 pixels down and 400 pixels from the left. Seems reasonable as far as I can tell. All right, let's see what happens. All right, perfect. And now make it controllable with the left and right arrow keys. <clears throat> now, this is a pretty high level instruction. You know, exactly what's supposed to happen when you push left and what's supposed to happen when you push right. You know, the model really has to infer what's going on in here. And it can't look at the screen. The model only has access to all of this text over here. And so from that alone, it has to infer what to do. But let's see if it worked. Let's see. I'm curious myself. The code looks reasonable. OK. It's quite good, but this looks like something I don't quite like. I, uh -oh. I don't want it to be able to get out of the screen like this. All right. This. You found the problem. Yes. Um, but it is alive, which I think is, is pretty good. But let's see if we can fix that problem. So constantly check if the person is off screen and put it back on the screen if so. So again, pretty high level. Um, it's possible that the model won't quite know what we're asking for, but let's give it a try. OK, Go let's ahead. test it. OK, this side looks pretty good to me. It's pretty good. What about the other side? Let's see what's happening there. OK, so that looks good too, except that you see this flickering scroll ooh, bar at the ooh, bottom. That is no good. Well, fortunately, you can just say disable scroll bars. By the way, I actually don't know how to do this in JavaScript. Does uh, the model know? Well, let's, let's find test. Out. The model does know. There we go. So phase one complete. The person is movable. Um, so there is, there is a suggestion from Twitch to see if we can make it move upwards if you press spacebar. All right. Well, let's give it a try. Um, so also make the person move upwards if you press spacebar. Let's give that a try. All oh. Right. And there we go. That is nice. We need now, to make it also move <laughs> downwards. Oh, no. OK. And so make it move downwards if you press the down arrow key. So we now have this nice flying person. Let's see. OK, so now we have given it full okay. all, all, all directional control. Good, good, good. good. All right, perfect. OK, so, now so a moving person is quite nice. But we need to get a boulder that we'll be dodging Rest. for right. the boulder to appear. And it appears. I, I hope it will appear. Oh, oh it does over, appear. An oversized <laughs> massive, boulder. Massive, massive boulder. Let's make it smaller. All right. Uh, how many pixels? Um, I, I, can you just ask it to be small? OK, oh, this is too small. Can you ask it to be four times as large? Let's give it a try. Huh, that's actually interesting. So it actually used, uh, it used a uh, style that transform. Now, you might want to do it that way. If you want to do it a different way, you can also just say, uh, you know, set the width to be 4x larger. And the great thing about 
JavaScript. I, all of this JavaScript all just running this, this, this playground set up so that if you don't like an instruction, you can just delete it. If you want to modify it, you can always just edit it, and then you can edit the code directly. Yeah. So I like the size of this of this. Now boulder. I want it to fall down. OK. And then when it hits the ground, I want it to reappear from the top again okay. somewhere else. Now uh, to, you know, let's set, set its position to the top of the screen at a random horizontal location. Hopefully, that's a simpler instruction that it could do. Seems pretty good. And it did it. Yep. And if we want to verify it's actually random, we can just kind of re-execute this code multiple times. Mm -hmm. Seems pretty random to me. Now have it fall from the sky and wrap around. Let's give okay. this a try. So again, still a lot going on in this, instru this instruction. So it may okay. not work. The code let's give is it a sense. Try. Oh, it's moving. It's going it's down. Moving. Okay. We got something. We got some signs of life. Got some signs of life. It's going back. And yes. There we go. All right. Very nice. This is very, very nice, nice indeed. It is alive. So I think All in order right. to uh, in order to put a capstone on this game, uh, we just need to. Indeed, there is no game if you can't lose. <laughs> sad, sad to say, but we do need to implement that loss condition. So for... Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, it is a function. <laughs> it is called you lose. <laughs> and now rewrite that function to include words of encouragement. All right, let's see what happens here. And sure enough, it makes a new. I Try function. again. All right, let's let's see what happens. Now we actually have to wire this function up. So when the person and the boulder overlap at all. So constantly check if the person and the boulder overlap at all. And if so, you lose. So I'm not even going to say explicitly call that function. Just it's got to figure out that that's what we want. So we'll see if that happened. Um, Ilya, okay. do you want to do the honors? Definitely. Oh, man. All right, <laughs> moment of truth here. Moment of truth. Success. You got squashed and a very encouraging message <laughs> to try again. I think that's very good life advice from Codex right so there. One more thing to show you. And All your favorite software comes with an API. In fact, I used to work at a company whose entire job is to build an API. All right, so here we have my iPad with just vanilla Microsoft Word installed on it. Um, there's one little, one little secret uh, within it that we'll get to in a moment. Um, but it turns out that Microsoft Word, like many pieces of software, has an API. In fact, it has a JavaScript API. Do. So here is a poem that was actually uh, one of my favorite poems as a child. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's called the Jabberwocky. <laughs> uh, it's very fun. Um, so I'm going to paste it into Microsoft Word. And uh, oh, shoot. Let me get rid of these leading spaces before we start. Sorry, That's I should have done this. Greg, this will take forever. Hold on. Hold on. I'll, <laughs> you know what? Fortunately, with the Codex add-in, I don't have to delete them. Delete all initial spaces. And it worked. It did work. The initial spaces are gone, but all the other spaces are still there. Still there. With and Codex, you talk to it. It generates code, which means it can actually manipulate or you know, it, can, it can actually act in the computer world on your behalf. And I think that that's a really powerful thing, that you actually have a system that can, can, can carry out commands on your behalf. Now, so make every fifth line bold. OK, phew. I was really worried about the speech recognition part. Yes. Well, <laughs> there we go. Oh, a success. A success indeed. So I think that's pretty good. And, and so that's the end of our demos. Uh, we're really excited that you were able to join us. And so just to review, uh, today we showed you the latest generation of the Codex model. It's available in OpenAI's API starting today. So please sign up on the, on the beta list. Um, if you want to be able to play with Codex in the context of a pretty awesome new kind of programming competition, that will be Thursday, 10 AM. Uh, we're really excited for you to get a chance to play with it. So thank you very much for, for tuning in. We're excited to see what you're going to build. And thank you for joining us to experience the magic of neural networks.